Thank you everybody for being here. Um, if you're just joining us, welcome. Trisha is dropping the link to this Google Doc into the chat. So please make sure that you're following along with us here as that's going to be the uh, primary source of our discussion. Um, just really quickly, I want to recap some of the learnings and feedback that y'all shared with us in the previous class. Um, we want to share it with you mostly because um, it, we want you to know that your feedback is heard. And so I wanted to just really quickly recap some of the improvements we've made for this class. And I did publish a future schedule for the next class. So if you are subscribed to our Luma uh, community, you should, first of all, go do that. The URL is lu.ma slash mashari. Um, so make sure that you're subscribed to our page here because you'll be able to see all of the classes when they come up. Um, Funnily enough, um, the next class is actually going to be the last class of this series, um, because I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Matt, we've covered all of the um, uh, the exercises in your curriculum that are required um, f with a, a large group of people. So, um, but the next class is published on Luma, and that's going to be two Fridays from now. So it's going to be December 17th at the exact same time, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so that hopefully is a good update for all of you to book that time in your calendar. The other thing is I am working on this write-up. It's just taken me a long time and I've been under the weather. So um, I will have that out there. Um, today, I have set up polls to ask for your opinions on, your, on, on the write-ups. And so we're gonna launch those. And then Matt has said that he will repeat back questions to help participants have time to collect their thoughts before asking them to come up to the spotlight and discuss their questions out loud. And really what that means is I'm going to try to pull people up faster. <laughs> so it's not really a mat um, um, change. It's more I have to get people up here sooner so that they're ready to ask their questions. And then um, Matt will, as always, try to center um, his advice and coaching around action, actionable takeaways for you. Um, and the last thing is we heard from y'all last time that you guys wanted to see some role play. So at the end of this class today, if we have the time to do so, we will jump into some role play, which will be really fun uh, for all of y'all. So that's some of the feedback that we've had. And then really quickly, um, I just want to go through some of the um, the agenda for today's class. We're going to go ahead and go through all of the questions first. So thank you everybody here who's pasted in your questions on the readings. If you haven't done it yet, you still have time to go ahead and paste them in. We'll try to get through as many of these as possible. So all you have to do is copy and paste this template at the bottom um, and drop in any of the questions you have. Matt will be going through each of them um, and I will be pulling uh, people up to ask their questions out loud. And then finally, um, if we have time later on, we'll do some role play and then feedback. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Matt right now. Matt's all yours. Awesome. Thank you, Regina. And then can we please get Sydney up to start and we'll yeah. start answering, answering the questions. For sure. Sydney, you are on stage. Welcome. Hey, awesome. Thanks so much for, uh, for doing this. Right on. Thank you for posting your questions. You already had a bunch of people plus one some of your questions, so we're off to a good start here. Awesome. So, Sydney, I've I've learned now that the I don't really fully understand the question until I both read it, which I already have, and hear it from you. So, can you please share it with me verbally? Yes. So, the document talked about helping the person who you fired find another job. And sometimes when you fire somebody, it's for performance reasons, right? Sometimes it's headcount and you don't have enough money, so you need to fire somebody and it makes total sense if it's not for, for, for performance reasons. But sometimes it is for performance reasons. And just, you know, something in my mind is we, we did fire somebody who uh, wants to keep doing that particular job. So it's something that they want to keep doing that same thing in their next role. And I know that if we got rid of them, I would not feel comfortable telling any of my buddies, um, hey, like you should totally hire this person for that specific role because you know, I, that's the reason why we fire, fired them. So how do we help them find a new job if we don't feel comfortable vouching for their skills? Yeah. Um, so let's get into specifics. Is, it, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So what role was this person doing? Why do you think they're not qualified for the role? And why do they want to continue in that role? For sure. So this was for a design role. And mm -hmm. um, 
they were not qualified because we were not good at picking them for this role, to be honest. Like we, we were looking for somebody who could probably, you know, execute really quickly. Uh, and this person was a lot more junior. So we, 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 should, we had unfair expectations for the fact that uh, she'd be able to do the job that we needed. And mm-hmm. we also rushed our hiring process. It, was, it just was not done properly. So she's just a lot more junior. I think if, if you gave her another five years, like it would have been perfect. Um, but because she's so early in her career and she's still very new, she's just transitioning from a previous job into design. Uh, we loved her attitude. And that is why we, we brought her on. Fantastic. So it sounds like she should go be in a place where she can apprentice and learn from a more senior designer, senior design team, spend one, two, three years in a big company, basically, like a Fang or a Microsoft, and with that has a design training program, and then she'll be senior enough to go be independent and do it all on her own. Is totally. Right? Yes, totally. Okay. And does she want to do that? Um, she's never done, she's never worked in a big company before. So I, I actually don't know. I did help her with some like strategy. So we, we ended up talking a lot about like strategy for finding a job and like how to work on her portfolio and things like that. But she's so new to this angle. I don't know if she'd be open to it, but I assume so, uh, if she, if she could land it. Perfect. So it sounds like she wants to keep, actually, let me repeat back the question. Yeah. Matt, what do I do when I, we've hired, we've let someone go for cause this person was too junior. They weren't able to perform as a designer. They needed someone, we needed someone more senior. And yet this person still wants to go be a designer. I can't recommend this person as a designer to my friends because I know that she's not the complete package yet. And, and all my friends need a single designer and she's not that, that person yet. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Well, so Sydney, what I'd say is what do you, if you're her, her father, what do you counsel her to do? I would tell her to one, spend time working on her side projects, to mm-hmm. uh, apply to as many roles as possible where she does think she fits. And uh, well, where do you think she fits? Definitely in a very junior role. So in, in an area where she can be given the space to improve, like we were moving really quickly, right? Like every week we were like, Hey, like we're, we're, we're working on sprints. Right. Um, right. But she, so she didn't have space to even like create something, get feedback, noodle on it, rework it. Like we just didn't have space to do that. Um, but someone where the pacing is a lot slower, where she can do that, where she can go to her mentor, she can go to other people um, and get feedback on her work so that she can improve over time. And then over time, she'll kind of build that intuition. Perfect. And is she accepting that advice and guidance? To be completely honest, I did not phrase it that way. Um, She was always very open to everything that we we gave her as feedback. She's always very open-minded about it. So I'm almost certain she would, but I did not phrase it in this exact way. Definitely not. Yes. Yes. So there you go. There's your answer. She needs to go to a place where she can learn, not a place where she needs to, she's responsible. She's the only, she can't go to a place where she's the only designer. Right. She has to go join a team where she can learn from others. And by the way, most designers, that's the role they want. I've found that design is very collaborative. Mm -hmm. And it's very rare that there's a designer who says, you know what? I want to be the only person on the team who does design. I want to be 100% responsible for the outcome of this product. Because most designers are scared crapless. Even senior ones Mm -hmm. are scared crapless about that kind of role. Because there's nowhere to turn. There's no one to help. What, if, if I'm if I'm out of ideas, there's no one to help me generate ideas, and often ideas um, get generated in conversation, batting things back and forth. It's like writing comedy. You very rarely see a comedy writing team that's just one person. It's usually a group of people that sit around. You know, so, seen the whole Conan O'Brien show. You know, behind the scenes, it's totally. always a team. There's a writer's room. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think this advice is going to land very well with her. Yeah, and. She's going to be open to it. And then you can, in, in good conscience, say, hey, this person has a great attitude. She's junior. But if you're willing to train, she's going to learn quickly and be a great asset for you shortly. Right. Does that, that, does that seem like something you can say with integrity? Yes, 100%. Perfect. There you go. Okay, great. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Sydney. And I think that matches what I think a lot of people have a similar question and in, in just in different versions of it. So let's do this. Um, Even though it's going to be a little awkward, do you mind, Regina, if we start, rather than asking, like, Sydney has a bunch of questions, rather than answering all of his questions, can we just answer that one, then next go to uh, Catalin, 
Um, I'm sorry if I butcher the pronunciation. Basically, you do one question from each person. And yeah. then if we have time, go back and do a second or third from each person. That way we just sort of get a lot of people up here on stage. Absolutely. And, I, and I, I'm going to actually ask if we can cover the ones that have plus ones first. And then we can Perfect. go through and see Perfect. anything else. I, I love it when, you know, you take my ideas and are like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> um, so Catalin, you're you're up. Uh, thank you, Sydney, for your question. <laughs> Catalin, are you here? Hi. Hey. I am unmuted, but not on video, right? Correct. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay. So uh, hello. Thank you guys for doing this. Uh, my question, um, I guess the second one is more important. The first one feels answered already. It's like regarding a more um, a minor event. The second one, so I have <clears throat> kind of an interesting trade-off. This year at the end of, by the end of the year, I want to have a new strategy, new direction for the company. So within that, I am not sure if I will need some people that are currently on my uh, team. Now, in between that happening, let's say it's going to take another two months of that happening, I need to like pay all these people. Join as panelists. Okay, I'm joining. Um, oh, Padalyn, are you still here? Hello? Yes, is it working now? Now it's working. Yeah, it's working, hi. It, it, it rejoined, sorry about that. Um, so what I'm trying to figure out is I have two partners, uh, two potential partners in this new direction of the company. I think the likelihood of them being needed in that is 80% plus. And then I have two project managers, which are less of an importance if I'm thinking about it that way, uh, but are also important people. So I'm trying to figure out if I should keep them and pay them regardless while I figure out the vision or I should just say to at least to the lo lower level project managers, say, hey guys, we're gonna put our collaboration on pause. It's also Christmas. So my humane part is like very being very reluctant to talk about this like three weeks before Christmas. So I'm trying to figure out if I should just pay all these people, which I've done in the past. I have a history of like being very generous and kind of like paying people, even if they didn't have work to do in that period of time, whatever. And I feel that's not the right approach. Um, that's the best way I can clarify it as of now. Let me know if that's uh, maybe uh, clear enough. Sure. And so it, it doesn't feel 100% on topic to how to let someone go um, with kindness, but it's close enough that we'll go ahead and unpack it together. And okay, so- no problem if it's not. So No, that's yeah. okay. That's okay. Um, so Catalin, wh what did you do to create this situation? I, what did I do to create the situation? I have a lot of people that have, have been working on a couple projects, which all of them had the intention to be finished by the end of the year. Uh, and this was the short term of, and in the interim, we would have figured out the plan and strategy and vision for next year, and then go up to these people and say, hey, I would like you to be part of that, or actually, no, our work on this project is done, you're fired, you can go on to the next thing, you don't have to wait. So I think that's what I've done. Kind of like the short-term actions that we had was to work on these people on meaningful projects together, and then at the same time, finish the strategy and then make sure they have a role in that. But all these people know of the long-term vision and strategy and want to be a part of that approximately. It's just, I haven't finished exactly what their role would be like, how would that be on the cap table and everything else? Is so Catalan, I'm, I'm a little confused here. Are, is this your entire team or is this just four people among 40 that you have? Uh, no, this is a part of the team. So we and have- what, what, what part, how, what, how many people do you have total? Uh, 12. Okay. And why so is it gonna, you're, you're saying you're about to radically shift the goal of the company of what your, what solution what problem you're trying to solve and how you're trying to solve it for customers. But you don't know how you're going to shift. It's going to take you another 60 days to figure it out. First of all, why is it going to take you 60 days? You already have some evidence that what you're doing right now is not working. That's true. Give me a second. 
you know what? I think I already know. Um, so I'm just extending by me thinking more, I'm just extending the answer. I already know the direction of the company and what people are needed. Okay, I just realized something funny. Um, I just realized that by me thinking more about this, I was just extending an answer I already have. So I already know what people I need and not. Okay, that's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> that's not embarrassing at all. It's, th this is the nature of the brain, is that when there's a lot of inputs and a lot of things going on, the brain has a difficult time thinking clearly. But when you have to express it verbally to somebody else, all of a sudden you go, oh yeah, you know what? I kind of do know the answer here. Yep. And, and so, so for our benefit, Catalin, what is the answer? The answer is um, I'm going to keep everyone because I already know the direction of this. And yeah, the, all of them are needed. So yeah, I'm a bit perplexed. That's funny. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. it. Okay. Well, then here's my next recommendation then, Catalan, is that if you already know the direction that they're needed, define what that direction is in the next few days so that, what they, so that they start working on the right thing now as opposed to start working on the right thing two months from now. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So I'll, I'll finish it by end of next week because I already know the 90% of the answer I already know. So I was just procrastinating on the 10% by giving that a very big timeline. I just got it. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. That, that's perfect. Perfect. Awesome, Catalan. That was easy. All right. Great. I just, um, I, I really quickly wanted to ask if Alexis or Jay had anything to add to this because um, every time somebody plus ones, um, I, I want to give them the chance to, to ask if they have any clarifying questions. Are you okay with that, Matt? If we, of course. Yeah. Sounds great. So Alexis and Jay, I'm um, allowing you guys to talk. If you guys have any further input, please uh, chime in now. Alexis says he's good. All right. And then Jay, anything else to add here? Um, I, I think I am good as well, but um, we, 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 we probably also have similar situation, but I think uh, um, like Catalin says, uh, I, I also realized probably it's from my own personal thought that I think it might take longer, I might need these people or not, but maybe I am the one who is procrastinating a lot of things, not these people. So I need to be probably more accurate on, okay, this is the vision and this is how much time and it should take. I think a lot of the time, I, I have the realization, Kevin, like you do, that I think it's not about other people, it's about us setting that right expectation. So I think, thank you, Matt. I think just saying this also, I feel like saying to other people, even let us uh, understand how much we actually procrastinate versus other people. So before mm -hmm. pointing our finger to other people, I think we should probably think about ourselves first. Right on. Awesome. J Jay, I since, since you're up here already, do you want to ask one of your questions? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, by the way, this is my first class, Matt. Uh, I, I found out about you guys uh, in, in class five, seems like. So I need to go back and review one through four just to understand if a lot of things have already been covered. It so is. I apologize, apologize if I'm um, in asking some questions to the group. Uh, oh, you're doing great. I love been... your questions. Thank you. So I, I think the question is, uh, I know um, I really love reading both of these articles. I hope I don't have to go to the second one. It's, it sounds really traumatic. <laughs> but the first one, we have a great engineer. Uh, he is really, really smart. And I'm, I don't come from a technical background. I'm more of a strategy and finance person. But um, just to give you a real example, November 30th was the day we need to ship our product. Didn't happen. It's already November, I mean, December 4th, 5th, 5th today. Um, what we know, this is not the first time that happened. Um, and we always let go this person because we know he delivers it just, you know, he's lazy. And then um, even though we set expectations, uh, this person's always missed the deadline. Mm -hmm. And then as a team, uh, me and my couple other folks uh, who make started the decision, we always have this, uh, you know, uh, confusion. Should we keep, keep him or should we bring somebody on board at the par so that we can replace him? So we always in this dilemma um, 
uh, to fire this person. So just wanted to, you know, share this and see if you have any suggestions on what to do in this type of situation. But I do, I do see that you mentioned about motivating a team and ARs. I need to go back and review this after the call. Right on. Um, and I put those more just as my notes. I still want to talk through this question. So yeah. um, it sounds like that you have one, a really good engineer. Is that the only engineer you have? Or do you have a team of them? This is just one, one out of many? Um, I have a team of engineers, but he's, he, he's leading the engineering team. So I would say probably the, the top one, uh, which Got is it. also why we have difficulty letting him go because a lot of other engineers rely on him. Uh, and when I had one-on-one -on -one with them, everybody look up for him. So, but it's just this person is like really, not really, you know, doing the job that we think he should be. Got it. Okay. So he's the team lead. He's yeah. the most technical. He ha he's based probably the architect who's helping people figure out how to do things. His right. team really likes him, but he personally is lazy or at least appears so because he's missing deadlines regularly. And then at some point he'll just sort of suddenly get motivated and, and do things, but it's always past the deadline. Is that right? That's absolutely right. And then, you know, he'll stay overnight. We'll get this thing done if we, you know, when there's like a final stretch. And then, but at the same time, when we set some deadline, it, it has happened like multiple times that you know, it, it hasn't been met. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we have to go constantly go back in mind and tell him this is what we need to do. Uh, this is urgent. And then, you know, client is waiting, waiting for, you know, sandbox credential, why are not doing this? And, you know, all, all, all those are starting. But eventually things get done, but I feel like this, this hurts the company. So uh, to, to set this culture, we also should fire him but when is the right time is something that we're thinking. Yeah. And, and the likelihood is that the opportunity cost here is, is even greater than you might even imagine because his whole team is basing their own behavior by watching him. And true, so true. they see him not performing. They go, okay, I guess that's totally okay. And they don't, won't feel the need to perform. And so he's actually creating the behaviors of his entire department, maybe even more so, maybe even other departments that also see this happening and go, well, why are we busting our ass when engineering kind of doesn't do anything at all? Um, so there's, there's a very important precedent being set. Um, now, knowing that, however, whenever someone is very capable, but they're just not performing, it's, to me, that's a red flag of there's something else going on. One of the, the two most common things that I've seen are one, the person in their personal life is not happy. That there's something going on which is causing them to be sad, depressed, et cetera. And therefore they bring that weight to work and therefore are unmotivated to perform anywhere in life. So while it is pretty radical, I ask each of the people that work for me about their personal life. And so if you open up motivating your team, it's the questions are, how do you feel about your life, your role in your life at work? But also how do you feel about your life just generally, your personal life? And oftentimes it's that second one question where people answer the score very low. And then I ask them, well, what would make it better? And they answer, mm -hmm. well, if I, you know, A, B, and C great, let me see if I can help you make A, B, and C happen. When I have done that, I have sometimes, not always, but sometimes been able to take someone who is completely unmotivated, boom, to turn them into highly motivated and highly productive on occasion. The second thing I've found is that another big cause of this is the person feeling like they're actually not part of the decision-making of the company, that they're just being told what to do. And they're kind of like, eh, like, all right, you tell me what to do. I'll do it. I don't really care. I don't care about the product. I don't care about the customers. I don't care about the mission. I don't care about the vision because I wasn't part of choosing it. And so that's why I asked the question of how are we performing as a company? What would make it better? And let them tell me what they would do if they were in charge. Which customer would they pick? Which problem would they solve? How would they solve it? Et cetera. And then all of a sudden, once they see me listening to them and incorporating their ideas into the decision of what they're actually doing, then oftentimes motivation increases significantly. However, outside of those two, I, those are the two big ones. And if, if it's not one of those two, 
that there's some reason why this person isn't performing. So I would just get really curious also and just say, hey, here's what I'm noticing. Can you please help me understand what's going on with you? And then again, that person either will share or they won't. But if it's a cause that can be changed, you change it. And if it's a cause that can't be changed, then you'll have to let them go. I would get, and I would give it a, a definite time frame. I would give it 60 days, but not more. Awesome. Yeah, no, thank you so much. That, that, that's really helpful. I didn't really think about from this two aspect about the personal life that's coming to the work and then maybe acting. And then I think what resonates, what you just said, Matt, is um, sales team this morning sent me a message saying, I think we're going to stop onboarding new clients because you know, our engineering team is not meeting the deadline, which I think I feel like the ripple effect of one person and then the whole entire department, you know, slacking on the delivery is actually causing a rampant impact on the entire company. Uh, so I think uh, that's, that's really true. And I think that's happening. So definitely, I think I need to go back and start talking with these people like to when this, at least starting with two and then thanks. Uh, I think Regina sent out this uh, list here on how to talk with these people. So I'll definitely read through and then um, figure out a way if I can motivate, if not just giving them the timeline and just fire them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now the, the other thing you mentioned, well, how do I get a replacement? How do I make sure that I bring someone else, train someone up or bring someone else along? And, and this is something that very few companies do. Um, uh, in fact, I remember I was talking to this with a, uh, Alexander Wang at scale um, just this week. And I told him this exact strategy. And he said, Matt, do companies really do this? And I said, no, Alexander, they don't, but they should. And you should. He said, okay, I'm going to try this, but this is radical. And you can read about it in the AORs right up. But what it basically says is what you want everyone to do is write down every single job that they individually do. And then you want each person to train somebody else in doing the job that they do meaning and that that training can take two days all yeah. training is is watch me do my job for one or two days then you do my job and i'll watch you and give you comments on how you could like where you get stuck i'll show you how to do it i'll give you feedback and then you're kind of done you kind of know my process now i'm not training you to be to truly replace me tomorrow but in case I get sick, I get hit by a bus, I do leave, you're my backup. And most people will, there will be plenty of people who will resist training a backup because they'll view that as making their job insecure. Unfortunately, then they're choosing themselves over the company because from a company perspective, there is no question that the company will be healthier and stronger if everybody has a backup trained in place. And if, the, and if each person performs well, they shouldn't be afraid of having a backup. We, we don't want to use the backup. We want, to, we want you to perform the job because the backup already has a job. Yeah. So this is a pretty radical thing that very few companies do, but those that do are very strong. I have two questions, Matt. Uh, one, uh, when you say backup, so essentially getting a same department person to be shadowing the same person so that they can actually learn what they're doing. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. And, and then the second question, um, we are remote. Obviously, I think probably everybody is. How do we shadow somebody? Maybe in the logistics side, if you can help me um, so to get on the Zoom together and do the work for at least a couple of days together. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Okay. That's exactly right. right. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's super helpful. Love you it. got it. Excellent. Okay, I also dropped in the how to onboard someone because you just talked about shadowing. And so I dropped in Matt's right up over there. Um, and one more thing I want to point out because Matt, earlier you talked about how to motivate the team. Matt just released a new video talking to the, Ryan Breslow, the CEO of Bolt, on how to motivate the team. So um, I would highly suggest everybody here if you're interested in learning how uh, great leadership will inspire your team, um, go ahead and go and check out that video at your own time. Thanks. And thank you, Jay, for the question. Um, yeah. Next up, next up, we've got Peter. Peter, you should be able to turn on your camera and um, uh, come up and ask your question. Okay. Uh, hi, hi, guys. For some reason, I cannot turn on my camera. 
Okay. I'm not sure why, but that's okay. Uh, you got your picture up, and yeah. it looks good. <laughs> good. All right. So yeah, my question, I guess, is actually quite uh, quite uh, similar to uh, to the first one. But maybe let me let, let me let me try to rephrase that uh, because it sounds like basically every kind of uh, case like this is uh, is about re, uh, redirecting the person towards something that they can be doing, mm -hmm. and I and and I wonder whether there are cases in which this is not the right path or it it, it cannot be done, and uh, mm -hmm. what what categories of these kind of paths could there be where you basically cannot do this. Uh, maybe it's you know like hiring for cause when somebody really did something something wrong, or culturally there was a there was a misalignment or something like that. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, so Peter, I think what you're, you're asking is, hey Matt, you, you in the first role play or the first question um, that got you know first example that got used about some, the the junior designer, it sounds like just taking like being caring for the person, wanting the best for them, but also being realistic about their abilities and putting them in a place where they can actually thrive and learn and increase and grow. So it's just finding the right spot for them, whether they're willing to admit it ego wise or not. But is there a situation where, you know what, this person is so bad, so evil, so whatever negative that they just shouldn't do anything anymore and you shouldn't help them participate in society. Is that right? I mean, well, it's 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 well well exaggerated, but for instance, they shouldn't be doing. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, like if they were to basically, let's say, if, if they did something like really bad, then yeah, you wouldn't want them to you won't, you wouldn't want to recommend them to another company where they could potentially do something as bad. Yeah, yeah. For, for I instance, think we we yeah. we need to get into specifics here. There are certainly cases where someone is just they can't perform anything. They can't perform or like. At, at they're, 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 they shouldn't be in business. Um, they shouldn't be in the business world, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be doing anything. Maybe they should be an artist. That's their real passion. Maybe they should, wh whatever it is that they have passion about, that's likely the place that they should be pursuing. Um, now, if someone, I mean, we can come up with extreme theoretical examples that I've never encountered in real life. Um, we can come up with someone, you know, embezzled twenty million dollars from the from the the company bank account. Um, but I've never come up with. I've never seen this in real life. Okay. Can I maybe uh, yes. give an exa example? Yeah. So, so let's say there is a person uh, that is a DevOps engineer um, and is responsible for the infrastructure. Uh, and for instance, you you don't think that they are, um, uh, or they've made made a number of uh, errors that caused to downtime, uh, because they were reckless, for instance, right? And uh, even though you were having conversations uh, about this uh, with this person, uh, the person doesn't agree with you and still wants to kind of pursue the uh, career in you know in other companies, doing basically the same thing that is let's say critical path work and stuff like that. And you think that. Uh, they don't have, they are not thoughtful enough to be doing this stuff. Okay. So, and when they're reckless, what kind of things do they do that are reckless? Um, for instance, uh, doing changes uh, that haven't been verified by someone uh, or yeah, doing deployments on Fridays. It's like, yeah, examples like that. Got it. Got it. Okay. And is it because this person hasn't been trained in what um, safe, uh, behavior is and therefore they don't know or they do know and they're like fuck it I don't care who gives a shit w which one is it uh, well the latter the latter so they truly don't care they truly um, are and, and when they realize that the there was a failure and the site went down do they say oh I feel I, I wish that didn't happen. And here's what I'm going to do from now on to make sure that doesn't happen. Well, they just go like, I don't give a shit. Like, who cares? Doesn't matter to me. Um, no, it's, it's, it's more like, for instance, let's say they did it once and said, it's good. Uh, yeah, I made, a, uh, I made a mistake. It, it won't happen again. And then it happens again. And then it happens again. Right? Because for some, reason, for some reason, they don't have the foresight uh, that uh, they don't like apply the thinking before they do. So they haven't written out a procedure. They haven't, no. 
Okay. So the key would be to have them write out a procedure or work at a place that has procedures written out that they follow. Okay. So, okay, so, so what you're getting at is that basically in all of the cases you can get down to like, if you ask enough questions, you can get down to the place where, uh, okay, I see. Absolutely, okay. absolutely, yes. Got it, all right. Sorry, Peter, That's... I know it's not the satisfying answer. No, no, it's insightful. It's it's good. Like if you can, like you know, peel, you're basically peeling an onion, and then at the end, at the end, you basically, uh, it might be that you actually get to the point where you're always able to kind of like pinpoint the problem, and then say, if this was uh, different than uh, in another company, then everything would be fine. Maybe. That's right. Yeah. All That's right. right. Thank you. You got it. All right. Great. Thank you, Peter, for your question. I um, noticed, Alexis, you had a question over here that Matt said he wanted to talk about live. So I'd like to invite you now to unmute. And if you can turn on your camera, um, but otherwise, um, yeah, if yeah you can hey, ask this question. It, you know, I'm having the same problem with my video, but uh, uh, hopefully you can hear me. But so, Matt, question. yep. So, uh, I've heard what you've been saying about, you know, someone who just doesn't, isn't reaching their potential or isn't the right fit, something. So I've got a situation where it's someone who works well, uh, mm -hmm. works hard, has been in the business a long time. Uh, when they do what they are supposed to do, they do a great job. But here's the issue. Um, we have a team meeting. Um, they pitch a product. Uh, we all said, sounds interesting. This is not the time to do it. Whole team agrees. Let's table it. Then I find out that that person went to a board member who they know and pitched it over my head. Mm -hmm. And I found out board member came to me and said, hey, this is not how this should go. You know, I'm just going to give you a heads up. I speak to that employee, that VP, who's been in the business for 20 years, who knows better and says, you know, profusely apologizes, just mm -hmm. said, you know, I was so passionate about this thing. I, I just I did this. OK. All right, that's fine. Then we find out two months later that this person took department budget and tried to develop it and also use budget to get a designer to do a pitch and they were gonna pitch it again. And so now they've allocated funds and that's one thing, but it's the integrity, you know? And it's not someone who I'm saying is, you know, hey, because I came from other companies where it was absolutely, hey, you're not, you know, hitting your mark, but we like you and we're going to help you get a job out there because, you know, that's the right thing to do. So I agree with that, but it's the integrity. And what are you supposed to do with that? You, you go, Ooh. I cannot support someone who, uh, you know, someone who is uh, lied to and someone who is an experienced, someone who's an adult and should know better. So I lay that on your, your, your doorstep, buddy. All right, Alexis, you're not going to like the answer. <laughs> so from your perspective, Alexis, well, here, let me repeat back the question to so make sure I understood it fully. So it sounds like you had a VP that worked for you or is working, probably doesn't work for you anymore, um, and who worked for you, who had an idea. And this obviously sounds like it's in a creative industry. Sounds like it's probably film or Music television festivals. or something creative like that. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so... And um, had an idea, pitched it to the team. The team was like, that's a great idea, but not right now. Let's do it later. And he was so passionate about, or she was so passionate, I'm not sure which, he or she was so passionate about it that she just said, well, you know what, screw it. And went around y'all to a board member. The board member then told you, and like, well, this shouldn't be happening. It shouldn't be going skip level around. And then you went to the VP and the VP said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. That was just, I was just so passionate about it. And then you're like, okay, no problem. But then later, they went ahead and used their own budget to go ahead and hire people to go pursue the project. So basically did the same thing again. And at right. that point, you're like, you know what? You lied to me. You're dead to me. And I can't recommend it to anyone because it's not like you didn't know. You understood and, and, what you were doing and you did it anyway. And let me add something that it's like, you know, it's so often in business, you sometimes go, wait, did that person misstate that? Or do they have a good excuse? And you're like, ah, okay, I, I accept it. And, you know, maybe you'll go, yeah, that could have been a lie, whatever. But to be lied to, for, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one across from somebody, it doesn't happen often. Mm -hmm. And you go, we're adults. 
and now you, you know your integrity is, is to be questioned and again like i said man i i absolutely agree with your point about hey help employees it's good for you it's good for the team it's good for that person i buy that into that this is the one case where i was like i i, I don't want to even see this person walking down the street i hear you this is where it gets hard and this is where the advice is the most important and so because you're feeling anger like you were cheated you were hoodwinked it was a a, a a personal, you were defrauded. And so you're feeling anger and you don't ever want to put anyone else in that situation. This is where it's helpful to talk to someone else and describe the situation who isn't feeling the same anger that you feel. Because, so that's me right now. And and I don't like a coach for this person. I, I actually have a different perspective. My perspective is that this guy is really passionate. And in a structure where projects need to get authorized by somebody else, this guy is not a fit. But in a structure where projects do not need external authorization and every team head can green light their own projects as long as they also solicit feedback. But even if the feedback is, this is a terrible idea from everybody, that person still has the authority to move forward. And there is one company like that in the creative world. It's Netflix. When I just, just read the book. But, and But I get, I, I get you. But here's my pushback to that. Yeah. Is that we're finding, you know, we're kind of finding the pony and the pile of crap and going, hey, so they're very passionate. Okay, I found your thing. Where I find it is like, hey, you lied. You, you're okay. going to lie again about something. And yes. it's not so, because we put you in that position. You're, you have Fair a enough. loose, yeah. Fair enough. And, and if, if that's where you want to settle, you can, you can give yourself the excuse to not help this person. Unfortunately, the result will be that you didn't help this person. And the rest of the team will go, oh shit, I now work in a place where, well, I work in a traditional place where if for whatever reason it doesn't work out, I'm gonna get dropped. And you, you miss an opportunity to create safety that most companies don't create. Hold and on. you'll but say, if... Matt, I just can't do it, but I'm telling you that you consider this to be an affront, but Netflix would not. But Netflix if everyone would on the be, team Netflix knows... say, we'll take that guy happily. We know that he lied to you, that's okay. We actually love that kind of passion. One final question. Sure. Everyone on the team knows the transgression because we're an open company and we're transparent. Mm -hmm. Aren't my teammates going to go, you just helped someone who lied? Yeah. I help them not be here. Interesting. I think, I think if you ask, you ask your teammates, they will not... First of all, they won't have the same anger that you do. And therefore, they won't have the same need to crush the person that you do. Oh, well, hold on. there's a difference between crushing is like I actively go around the community and say, don't hire this person. Right. What, what I would do is just say, hey, I cannot recommend you to people. Because when they ask me something in depth about you, I can't say, uh, the five things you did really well, but the one thing you didn't keep that quiet because in six months, they might come back and say, hey, you know, that person. Me. Yeah, you don't have to keep quiet about it. You can say, hey, listen, I've got this person. The way we operate, they, he needs authority. He went around me and he did it several times and therefore it doesn't work here. But if you don't have that structure and you're okay with that behavior, this person actually has a lot of talent. That's a great point. I've got to awesome. call that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You got it, Alexis. All right, my man. Thank you. Just, Excellent. Just because, just because this is super juicy, Sydney had a, a comment. And so I'd like Sydney to jump off mute and, and say his comment out loud. Because Matt, I, I think it's it's interesting. Sydney, can you hop off mute? 
Yeah, uh, that was one of the most fascinating discussions in all the sessions. Um, and the surprise takeaway, which I'm still wrestling with in my mind, is that there's really no such thing as a bad employee, just a bad spot for that particular employee, which is something I'm wrestling with because I hang out with people and they complain about their employees all the time or coworkers all the time. And, and uh, so I'm still trying to like, you know, figure it out in my head, but, uh, but that seems like, you know, the, the, the kind of takeaway from, from all of this, which is really kind of mind blowing. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, if you, if you unpack every action that someone does, almost inevitably, there is a rational reason for that behavior. And so we just have to create the environment that rationally causes people to perform. I mean, even people who commit triple homicide, most often, it's a rational act. And it's a, a circumstance. And I know that sounds crazy, like what? A, a murderer, a murderer is just a horrible person. Most people I know, and frankly, I do know quite a few people who've committed murder because I spent a lot of time training and coaching ex-cons, is that they were living on the street and they needed to eat. And so they started selling drugs and because they could make money, enough money to eat. And the United States doesn't have welfare for men. It only has welfare for mothers of children. So there's no public support. There's no public assistance at all. And drug dealing is a violent business. And it was at some point, kill or be killed. And they killed. And, but it was all a very rational act in order to put food in their mouths and give that same person, train that person in a skill that allows them to go get a job, even though they have a criminal record and a job being like truck driving or construction where it's in such scarce supply. There's so much demand for that role and so few people that have it that the employer's like, I don't care what you did. I don't care if you killed 20 people. I'm still gonna hire you because you have that commercial driving license. And so you take that, that convicted felon put them in that role, suddenly give them $80,000, $100,000 a year legitimately, suddenly they become a perfect citizen. Suddenly they get an apartment, they pay taxes, they pay rent, they're completely peaceful, they have, a, they have a family, they have children. And I've seen it time and time and time again. So yes, my belief is that human beings are rational people and they perform based on the environment that they're put in. And guess who's creating that environment? If you're CEO, you are. That's a really brutal realization. And it, I mean, it's incredibly, I mean, it, it, this is hard, hard stuff. But the more, if you keep looking inward and going, that person just did this terrible thing. What did I do? to create an environment that caused that person to do it. And if you're really willing to ask that question, whew, you'll get lots of good learning. Now, it may be too late to change it with that person, so it's easier to let them go, but please change it for all the rest of the team members. So when, when, I, when I realize that it didn't work out with somebody and I'm gonna let them go, I do ask myself, what, again, what did I do? And I go, oh shit, that's what I did. Okay, well then from now on, then I go tell my team, here's what I did and here's what I'm gonna to do to change it because I don't want anyone else ever to be put in that situation that I put that person in again. How does that res resonate, Sydney? Oh, that, that was fantastic. And I love that you gave the murder example because that is like the extreme in our minds. And you made that like sound logical and rational. And I was like, wow, that, that was that was really mind blowing. I, I feel like I have to put a disclaimer that we are not encouraging anyone to murder. <laughs> I'm going to put that out there in case anyone is listening. Please don't go murdering people. But thank you Sydney, for contributing to the discussion. And thank you, Alexis, for being so open and, and vulnerable. I appreciate the last Batiste. Uh, Luke, you had a really interesting question in the chat, and, and I will uh, I will ask you to jump into the question you put in the doc, but would you mind going off mute and sharing uh, your question on positive mindset? And then Regina, maybe after this, we go to role play. Totally. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, Matt. 
Um, so really fantastic talk. So kind of over a uh, common theme throughout is openness, transparency, positive some thinking. And I'd love to get your take on, is that something which is just like very SF culture applies best to startups there? Or are, do you think there's other situations where always trying to get very positive sum may not work out well? So for example, say you're in private equity or say you have different circumstances in the company. Are there, do you think it's like, is the global principle we should keep using in business? Um, this is very meta well, compared to normal our tactics. Yeah, no, this is a great question. So uh, you have to know that I coach people, I coach CEOs and heads of investment firms um, in certainly in the Bay Area, but also um, across the United States, uh, in Europe, in Australia, in India, in uh, where else, in Turkey, in um, and within Europe, like in Monaco and in Portugal. And um, so literally like every, every major country around the world. Oh, South America, Brazil, I forgot that one. Um, so I don't think this is, and, and we've been experimenting this in all of those companies and all of those cultures. And um, the results have been very positive. So it's not just a bait, this works in the Bay Area, but it doesn't work anywhere else. This is just, this works with human beings, whether or not they're in the Bay Area. Um, the next you went to industry, and that is sort of uh, private equity is one, one you mentioned, but I'll just go to investing generally. And I coach heads of hedge funds, do I coach any head of a private equity firm? I don't right now. Uh, certainly venture firms and certainly venture firms that are also do, you know, late stage growth equity. But no, I, you're right. I don't coach any buyouts. Um, yeah. And by the way, these firms are not just like penny any firms. These are like the top, top of the charts. Um, and so, and these principles, while they are, I definitely, there's a much bigger resistance to using them. Um, in fact, I had one, the head of one private equity firm, arguably the most successful private equity firm in the world. And he said to me, Matt, we're actually, I'm actually very good friends with him um, and have been for a long time. He said, Matt, I, uh, I would love to coach with you. And, uh, but if I do, it will be seen as weakness from my partners. And there's one partner in particular who I think will use that to then go around to the other partners and then do like a coup and, and just have me taken down and taken out because I'm, I'm, I'm mentally weak enough to engage with a coach. And I was like, okay, I'm not gonna argue with that. Like if it doesn't make you feel comfortable, don't do it. Um, and so I do get that the private equity world is a, because there isn't a structure of a CEO that they're, you know, palace coups actually do happen because really it's partners, even though there could be a named CEO, they're actually really, it's, it's, it's votes that determine who that CEO is, where in the normal structure in a company that doesn't happen. So yeah. Is that the kind of thing that you're you're well, alluding to? Like, analogy, what's the example that you're thinking of? Yeah, an analogy for hiring was you have a reputation. Say a partner reneges on a deal or acts in bad faith. Mm -hmm. If you go in with a very positive sum ending to that deal, like, for example, with the hiring one, you're like, no worries, I'll still recommend you really well. I'll just recommend other types of deals and so forth. Then other people in deals and again this is fairly abstract but other people in deals may then go okay i know their reputation i know i can renege and act in bad faith and actually there aren't bad consequences versus choose the term i think you said before like versus if you crush them partners then may not renege on deals mm. and when you say so renege on a deal what's an example of reneging on a deal let's use a um, real example here. say so say you have a vc firm who writes a term sheet looks at all your company due diligence this is again hypothetical looks at your company in depth and then is like actually i'll just use that for a portfolio company i've not told you about oh got it so that would be um, like very bad faith but, but that's but wait a second so your ceo 
Yep. Investment firm comes to you, says, we want to know all about your company because we think we're going to invest in you. You yep. share them all this information and then they go and say, hey, you know what? We're not going to invest in you, but yep. they go invest in your competitor or they just hand the information off to your competitor that they've already invested in. Yeah. Okay. There's like an extreme thing where like purely positive some thinking of like, if you were to apply the hiring principle of, I will just recommend you strongly, but the, the types of deals which maybe aren't IP sensitive, that well, would be- But there's a big difference here. You just said a firm did this. Yeah. What I was talking about before is an individual who you're letting go, who's your employee. You have, you have a standard of, I think, of mm -hmm. care because you created the environment that you put that employee in. Yeah. This venture firm, you did not, you don't have any standard of care there. You didn't create the world that they're living in. They're an outside independent firm, which by the way is gonna do just fine, is incredibly powerful, incredibly wealthy, and they're behaving incredibly badly. So no, that's a completely different situation. And my recommendation there is let the world know. So your the meta point would be very positive, some thinking, transparency, et cetera, within the company where you've developed this standard of care. It's very different than when it comes to external partners. Absolutely. Cool. Really cool. Right on. And by the way, it's a very real thing. And I have quite a few examples that I know of where that exact thing has happened. And, um, and maybe the CEOs actually are teaching me something, but in each and every case, the CEO decided to go, you know what, I'm just not, I'm just going to let it go. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. And they haven't. And these are, these are big companies and big firms. Fantastic. Is it still okay if I ask my more concrete question? Yes. Related to it. Perfect. Um, yeah. What are your heuristics that you use? when you decide that you should fire someone. You've mentioned a couple of times where you've said like, I came to this conclusion that I needed to let someone go. We've spoken lots of times around culture agreements, you know, turning up to meetings on time. But I'd be really interested to hear what are the, maybe some stories or like how you get at tabs on performance. Are you using OKRs, rating them to OKRs if they're continually missing them? Yeah, how do you assess performance and use that to determine when you let people go? Yeah, so in the very beginning, um, we come up with a, you know, here's a 90 day plan. I ask them to write it up, but then I write up my own, then we merge it. And then each quarter here, are the, you know, here's your OKRs for the quarters. These are your guideposts, but they, they don't, that doesn't capture everything. It doesn't capture behaviors and, and it's usually um, behaviors, which are sort of the more common cause of letting someone go. And so I'll, on a once a month basis, I will, I try to anyway, rate someone on an absolute scale. On a week, every time I'm in one-on-ones, I try to also, hey, I like that you did this. I wish that you would do that. Give person what I call relative feedback. But that doesn't let them know like how they're performing. You know, are they on track? Are they above, are they on expectation, above expectation, below expectation? So once a month, I try to anyway, and Regina, I probably haven't done this with you in a while, and you're probably going to tell me we need to, um, but I let the person know whether they're on an absolute basis, whether they're on, above, or under expectation. And, uh, and then that way, it's very clear. And if they're on expectation or above, I'll let them know what they need to do to get to the next level. But that's not a worry. They're just, they're doing great. If they're under expectation, I make it very clear, here's what you need to do in writing, boom, 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 these three things to get to meeting expectation. And if you don't, then we'll have to have a conversation about you, us finding you another place to be. I don't, I don't, I don't sugarcoat that. I make it very clear. This is what you need to do in order to keep your role here. And some people say, Matt, isn't that threatening? Like, no, it's informing. And I don't, I don't say it in a threatening way. I don't say it with anger. I just say, listen, I'd love, I want you to perform. I want you to be in a place that you can perform. It isn't happening here. This is what needs to happen to get here. If you can, great, I'm going to support you. But if you can't get there, then I will help you find another, another place to be. And that's it. And it's, I don't know what those things are. It's so case specific. 
that I can't tell you what the criteria are for letting someone go. I just can tell you that when I do let someone go, they do not have any confusion nor surprise that this is happening. They absolutely knew that I felt they were not meeting expectation and they absolutely knew what they needed to do to meet expectation. And they absolutely knew that they didn't do it. So there's no like, oh my God, I never knew. That doesn't happen. And they always thought the steps they needed to do to meet expectation were reasonable and doable, or sometimes were actually like they're not doable. Um, if I have not had a situation where someone thought they were not doable. Yes, they, in each case, because when we go over to the, if I say, here's what you need to do, and they go, man, I can't do that. That's not reasonable. I said, okay, well, then this, this position isn't, isn't right for you. So we should just, we should end it now. Great. Um, last sub question on this. Tell me, Calibrate, for your number of direct reports across their careers, are they vast majority always on or above? Or are most people at some point ending up going below one month and then getting back on track? Oh, the vast majority are on or above. It's throughout quite... their entire career. I'm sorry? Throughout yes. their entire career. Yeah. Yes. Well, because I'm trying to create an environment where people know what we're trying to do. They know what their role is in order to do that. I'm giving them constant feedback. Hey, I like that you did this. I wish that you would do that differently. And it's, and, you know, once a month, it, it, I mean, it has happened where I say, hey, you know, it's under expectation. And they go, oh, and then they really pay attention. Here are the things you need to do. And then boom, they immediately do them. Yeah. So maybe that's, maybe that's an exaggeration. Yes. With, with, I don't know what percentage, maybe like 30% of people, there's like a, a one-time dip. But it's it's a very it's it's one time. I and would also chime in that magic questions really help with that because when you're asking somebody how their work life and their personal life is doing, if they're usually a performer but they're dropping down, there's a chance that something in their personal life could be affecting that as well. Right. And more often than not, when they when I think their performance goes down, they think my performance has gone down. So they usually have some sort of feedback for me, like, hey, Matt, you're doing these things, which is making my job really hard to do. Like, you need to change. And I go, oh, okay. And then I change. And then they say, okay, Matt, that's good now. And then almost always their performance in my eyes comes back up too. It's always, it's usually very mutual. Yeah. And then you're always integral to, you wrote down these three points. If they miss one of them, you're like, sorry, that's what we discussed. Or there's flex in that. Well, it's not like, I'm not trying to get them to screw up. Yeah, I actually want them to hit these three points. So I'm gonna meet with them weekly. Like you have 30 days or 60 days to do this. And I'm gonna meet with you weekly to give you constant feedback as to how you're doing and what you can do to get to, get to all these three points. So it's not like, here are the three points, 30 days later, ah, you did two, but you didn't do one sorry, you're out of here. Like, no, 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 no. It's not that. I, I am cheering for them. I want them to succeed. And I give them micro feedback along the way to help them. And so, sometimes it will, I'll even sit down and do it with them. In fact, and that, it's a very successful technique if I have the time. It's like, you know what? It seems like you're struggling with doing this particular thing. Let me show you how I do it. You watch me and then... I'll watch you give you feedback and then you'll be doing it, you know, well. Yeah. Cool. Fantas I've got many sub questions, but I should probably stop there, but fantastic. <laughs> right so much. Luke, Luke, thank you very much. Now, yes. if, it, if it's okay with you, Regina, I'd love to go into role play of how to actually let someone go. Cause I think this is key. And this is maybe how we'll sort of finish out the, the class. Yes, I completely agree. I just wanted to point out one more thing for Luke. Um, I would recommend looking at the keeper test from Netflix. Um, you can look at it through the no rules rule summary that Matt has posted. I can also share it um, under your question, but that's a, it's, it's a really simple way of figuring out whether you should let someone go or not. Awesome. Matt, it's all yours. How do you want to awesome. do that? Awesome. Well, let's have someone, uh, I think we, we went through um, Sydney quickly so let's have, if it's okay, let's have Sydney come up, come back up. 
And is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so right, welcome right back. You ready to role play? All right. So I'm getting fired today. You're getting fired. But more importantly, after I fire you, you got to pick someone else and you got to fire them. Oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. So, so right. there, there are a few components here. There's two key components. One is, which I didn't really talk about in the write-up, and I, I realize I should, so I'll, I'll at some point go write this up. But when, when I say something difficult to somebody, there are two ways that they can receive it. They can be surprised by it, in which case their amygdala just goes, just gets triggered. And it's almost like this helmet where like, you know, like a motorcycle helmet where it has it's like this visor comes down and it comes down so quickly that the person doesn't even realize they're in it. And they'll feel anger, they'll feel fear, they'll feel sadness and their brain will just be going crazy with thoughts. Uh, that's one way, that's the normal way these things happen. And therefore they go badly. The other way is I can warn them, hey, what I'm about to tell you is likely gonna cause you to feel sadness, fear, anger, be ready for that. And if the person is already of the mindset like, hey, fear and anger, give me bad advice, then they'll be on the lookout for this fear and anger coming and they won't act on the thoughts that come into their head. So I usually try to do that first, like just give you a warning, Get ready for this. This is not going to feel good. Get ready for the crazy whirlwind of emotions that are about to come. And that gives the person just a few seconds that they need to prepare. The second piece is, is I need to take responsibility for how I created this. And I also need to share that this is just my perspective. This isn't truth. This isn't reality. This is just what's going on for me. So I guess those are two different pieces. So it's one is I give them a warning. Two is I take responsibility. Three is I say, this is just my perspective. However, I'm still moving forward. I'm still moving forward with, I'm letting you go. So let's, here's how it goes. So Sydney, um, this is going to be a difficult conversation. You're not going to like what you're about to hear. And you're likely going to feel sadness, fear, anger. And I want you to be ready for that. Are you ready for that? I am. Okay, thank you. Um, Sydney, I recruited you, I hired you, I onboarded you, and I was your manager and gave you feedback. And all along that way, I didn't do a good enough job. And I've created an environment in which, at least from my perspective, your performance hasn't met the expectation that we have for the role that you're in. And I appreciate that you've tried and I've seen you try. I just don't know what else I can do to create the environment that will allow you to succeed. So rather than keep spinning wheels and me not creating that environment for you, I'd, I'm going to let you go and I'm gonna help you find a place that is that positive environment for you that will allow you to succeed. And I think that you are passionate about A, B, and C, but I'd like to know that from you. I'd like to get curious and understand more what it is that you'd like to do. And if you're open to it, I would like for you to allow me to be your agent in finding a great role for you in a great company where you can thrive. I also don't want you to feel fear like, oh my God, I'm screwed and I can't pay for my kid's school and I'm gonna have to pull them out of school. So I'm gonna be giving you a severance, six month severance starting today so that you don't have to be concerned that you're gonna get caught in a cash that you're, that you're gonna to have to reduce your lifestyle in any way. Wow. Um, am I, am I supposed to respond to this or yes, this is okay. real Sydney. Okay. Um, well, at first off, I appreciate the six month severance that definitely allays some of those fears when, uh, you know, the, the first thing I'm thinking about is cash flow and, and certainly, you know, making sure I can take care of the people that I care about. So I, I very much appreciate that. 
Um, we've gotten to know each other for quite some time now. And so you actually probably know me and also where I'm lacking, I guess, in my skills better than anybody else. So where would you see uh, as a good fit for me, especially since I didn't fit your company? Like I, I'm a little concerned, you know, if, if I got fired, you fired me, uh, how are you going to recommend me to somebody else? Yeah, that's a great point. So the way, way I'm going to recommend you, Sydney, is I'm going to, you do have passions and, you know, you're, you're, you are so passionate about creating um, this TV show that you want to create that you actually went around my back to the board. And then once we had that explicit conversation, you went ahead and used your budget anyway to go forward. And what that tells me is that you, um, you certainly don't fit in this company because we have a, an explicit authorization process where you need the authority and, you, and, you, and you, you didn't follow that. So we need to find you a place where they actually encourage that kind of behavior, they don't require an authority that you have, by definition, you can go create the shows that you want to create. Um, now you solicit feedback and, and dissent from people and, and you're responsible for the outcomes of those shows, um, but you have the authority to do that. So your behavior in that company would be normal and positive, whereas in this company, it was a, a breach of, of integrity. Integrity is an interesting word. So I know that like what I did made you angry, right? What I did yeah. made you kind of lose trust in me. And I have fears where when I talk to the next person or when, when, when you help introduce me to, or help me be my agent, um, they'll ask you, Hey, why did, why did you let Sydney go? Yes. Um, and you're going to tell them, Hey, like he breached my trust, right? Like that's kind of a, a big fear of mine. That's a, it's a le very legitimate fear, Sydney. And so what I will say is I'm not going to tell me you breached my trust because as I think about it more, um, it was, I, I, what did I do to create this? Well, I created an environment that required a, 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 a command and control structure that required authority. I didn't create a Netflix environment. I didn't create, I asked you to be passionate about your ideas, but then cut off the ideas that you're passionate about and expected your passion to suddenly quiet down instantly. And I'm, I'm now questioning whether or not I change our entire environment. I don't think it's in time for you to be here, um, but I, that's what I'm gonna share with people. I'm gonna share that um, I create an environment that causes people to get super passionate and then causes them to shut down. And that's not an environment that you work well in. You work in well in an environment that where you can get passionate and stay passionate. And um, so I'm not going to say you breached my trust because I realize now is I set you up um, to do that. And therefore that's not a breach of trust. So if you are taking ownership over this and then how come I'm getting fired? Because it's a very good question, Sydney, because, at a, because the, the, the shift hasn't occurred yet. And so we need for it, and also we haven't collectively agreed to this shift. And so the company culture and behavior right now is command and control. You clearly don't operate well within that. Let's not have you be here. And then over time, if we can alter our culture to allow that great, but we, we can't, but it's going to take too much time. And right now you don't fit in here. Cool. I understand. I appreciate it. Great. Sydney, now let's take a stop there for a second. Now, how did that actually feel on your end? I mean, did you? Um, definitely felt like you listened, which is, which is really, I think, really important. Um, the severance was actually, I think, a big part of it. Like if, if I was getting fired, I think the biggest thing I'd think about is like, oh, am I going to be able to make rent in you know, the next few months? Or um, I'm going to have to dig into savings. Does this change my entire plan or my life plan or you know, whatever it is? And so the severance was a big piece of it. If you're giving six months severance, that, that is a huge piece where at least you know, I can ignore that part because six months is plenty of time for, even if you weren't helping me, I'd be able to find a job, right? So, um, or at least I believe I would be able to, right? So, so that was a big piece of it. Um, and then I, I think in general, taking ownership was big. Like it didn't feel like it was as much my fault. It, 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 was, uh, it was a collaborative effort. It just didn't work out in the end. And, um, and, and, you know, I tried to put a little pressure in certain areas and, and you know, you, 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 uh, you definitely, I think, handled it in a way where we didn't go into an argument. It didn't end up into a shouting match or a fight or anything like that. Uh, but you were also able to very gracefully, you know, um, 
stay firm that, Hey, I'm getting fired. And, and also, um, you know, allay my fears that you, you'd actually be able to help me find another job. Fantastic. Now there's one thing you didn't do, Sydney, you didn't attack me. You didn't get angry. You didn't start saying, Hey, you motherfucker, how <laughs> dare you do this? And, um, if you did do that, then what I would have done was saying, Hey, Sydney, it sounds like you're really pissed off at me. And you think I basically try to repeat back what I think you're thinking and feeling until you went, yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking and feeling. And if I were able to do that, it would likely reduce the temperature of your anger significantly. Got it. I want to throw that out to you. So now, Sydney, knowing that, um, and Jay asked if Sydney asked to give one more chance, say for another 60 days, would I have allowed it? And the answer is no. The, um, the 60 day period started 60 days ago. This is now the end of that 60 day period. So there isn't another one, uh, but good question, Jay. And, uh, and by the way, even with the 60 day period, um, you know, just know that if someone's really not performing, um, like I would say 20% of the time, if I give really clear and direct feedback, the, uh, the, the person then turns it around, but that's only 20% of the time. And so if it's a completely legitimate strategy, which by the way, is sort of the Netflix strategy, is they don't actually even give people the 60 days. They're like, you know what? You're not performing. Here are the reasons why we're going to give you a huge severance and we're going to help you find another place to be. Because what they found is the time and effort it takes to put into people to maybe get a 20%, save 20% of them, they'd rather take that time and effort in finding the next person who can be a superstar. And that's a completely legitimate strategy. It's not one that I personally follow, um, but I completely respect those that do. All right, but now the uh, let's go and grab one other volunteer. Let's have Sydney stay up here. Now, yeah. Sydney, I'd like you to be in the role of the firing and someone else to be in the role of getting fired and give Sydney a hard time, you know, get angry at him, get pissed off. And Sydney, I'll coach you through cool. um, how to respond. All right. Um, My palms are sweaty. Oh yeah. <laughs> Matt, do you want to pick the person who goes through this role play. And also for those of you who are coming in on time, I want to be respectful of your schedules. It is 1020. Um, but if you are able to stick around, this one should be interesting because Matt will be coaching uh, Sydney and whoever the other volunteer is through this process. I, I think I think Alexis is a salty dog. I think he'll give Sydney a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'm ready. Right on. Right. And I want you to get angry, Alexis. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, good. I'm already pissed off. What? <laughs> it's, a, it's a Saturday. Why am I here? <laughs> exactly. Oh boy. All right. Should I get started? Yes, please. All right, Alexis. Um, so what I'm about to tell you, it's not going to feel good. It's, you know, you're probably going to feel a lot of emotions. Um, and I wanted to, to tell you about that up front. Are you, are you open to it? Is now a good time to, to have this conversation? I guess so. So when we brought you into this company, you know, we, we wanted something really specific and I didn't put you in, in, in the right position to succeed here. Um, we were, you know, we were looking for something really specific. We didn't give you the right tests and, uh, and, and, and things of that nature. And then as we started working together more, um, I think the, the environment that we had created wasn't set up for you to, um, to be able to have the, the, I guess, the freedom that you wanted um, to, I guess, uh, take on the project that, I'm trying to be more specific here, um, that, that you wanted. Um, this is purely my perception, and this is not you know, the, the reality of things. Um, and, and I don't want you to take it that way either. This is just how I'm, I'm viewing this. And as a result, we have to take action here. Um, we've talked about this over the last few months and, you know, we, we've had this conversation where you haven't quite met the expectations that we needed as a company. 
Um, so we have to make the hard decision to, to kind of help you um, find a new role from here. And, and that is what we're going to do. So to allay your fears a little bit, we're going to make sure that uh, we take care of everything. So you'll get six months of severance. Um, you don't have to worry about any payments. You can keep living the lifestyle that you wanted. Uh, and then, you know, we'll spend the rest of the time kind of going over how hey, I, I, I just got to interrupt you. I, sure. I really appreciate the six months and I've heard you do this for other people, but I moved here for this. I committed myself to the company. You and I went through exactly what you wanted. And I think I'm hitting those criteria. I'm not trying to fight for my job because it sounds like this is uh, well on the way, but I feel really, really angry that you are saying this is your fault that I'm in this position. Alexis, what I'm hearing you say is, hey, like, Sydney, you made me move all the way over here. You sold me on this huge vision and you told me that I was going to be able to take on these, these, these really ambitious goals. And then you told me, hey, like you can't do this, you can't do that. Um, and, and now I'm getting blamed and I'm getting the ax for, um, for, for, for doing that. It, it, is that what, you, uh, what you're saying? Yeah, it, it sounds like I'm the one getting fired and you're turning around saying, hey, this is what we're going to change and this is who we are and everything like that. I've listened to this for months and I believe I'm doing the job you asked me for. And now you're giving me six months, which I appreciate because that, that, that's, that, that is generous. But man, this changes my life right now. And it's a huge hit to me because I committed to you and your company by what you told me. So Alexis, what I'm hearing you say is this is so life-changing um, that, uh, that, you know, your 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 feeling feelings of uh, of anger or betrayal almost because you moved all the way over here and now suddenly, um, you know, you moved you, you you uprooted your entire life to come out here and um, and, and now you're not getting the promise that uh, that that I made. Is that is that yeah. correct? Yeah, hell yeah. I have to go home tonight and tell my wife that I've been fired, and I got three kids who. Are, you know, they're young, they're proud of me. They, they, you know, it's not just like, hey, that's dad, that's Superman to them. Man, I feel like crap. So Sydney, let me jump in here. Yeah. Both of you are doing a phenomenal job. And so Sydney, what, what you need to do is when you repeat back, you actually need to get bigger. Even bigger, okay. Than what Alexis is doing. And he'll only really feel heard because he keeps saying yes. And then he tells you more. Right. And then you repeat it back. And he says, yes. And then he tells you more. And so the way you're going to get it. So let me show you how to, how to cool. get ahead of it. Alexis, it sounds to me like you were fucking pissed off. Like, man, what the hell? You moved your entire family out here. You, you uprooted your kids out of school. You ripped them out of all their friendships. You put them into this new place where they didn't even know anybody. And now you've got to go home and tell them that you no longer have this job. And they're just going to sit there and cry like, Daddy, what did you do? Why did, why did you put us through all this hell? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. You get it. And so see now, Sydney, he just says, yeah. And then it's yep. over. Yep. There's, I, went, I went all the way that he was going to go. He doesn't have to go there. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And otherwise, he would just keep adding new information. I have to keep repeating back. And I wouldn't be able to get to the next part of the conversation. That's exactly And, and I, let me add this. You know, you're telling me this. And, and in five minutes, I, I mean, things are popping in my head. Like, oh, crap. I got to drive home tonight. I got to tell my wife. You know, and two seconds later, oh, I got to tell my kids. I have baseball practice tonight or whatever. That's right. That's right. So in this case, right after he says something like that, um, let, let's say I did, you know, exaggerate to the correct amount and he still, you know, says something after that. Um, do I go deeper? Do I ask about like, hey, like, what is the biggest fear right now? Or, or do I pull back and kind of, you know, go into, hey, like, the severance will cover some of like, do I try and try and, you know, move forward into into the next part of like, how can we actually help you find your next your next position? So you don't have to worry about those things. Yeah, as painful as it is, the longer you spend allowing him and exploring his fear and his anger, the better. Got it. Even if it takes 15, 20, 30 minutes, it'll feel like forever. And you'll feel like, oh my God, let's just, just end. But just know this is, this is him letting off steam. And the more you can let, because if you don't do it then, then it becomes in 
closed inside him. Mm. And now A, he'll hate you. B, like this, that's when you'll start to see things getting written glass door, which say that you're the devil. And then, I mean, if it's high profile enough, you know, maybe even a, a newspaper article being written about you. So whatever amount of time you spend there, as painful as it is, it's nothing compared to the time you'd have to spend later if you didn't do it. Got it. And it's not problem solving, right? Like, you know, I don't have to solve the fact that he has to have soccer practice tonight. I don't have to solve the fact he has to tell his wife. I don't need to say anything there. It's just me repeating it back in a much more exaggerated way until I get to the point where they say, he says, yes. That's exactly right. Cool. And then you can also say, is there more? Got it. And that's another way. Let another round of, of sort of splurging occur. The more you can get out of him, the better. Amazing. Got it. Awesome. Um, I think you guys nailed it. Alexis, what a performance. My Thank God. <laughs> I, I was like shaking over here. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I got mad, you know? Love it. I, I yeah. it. But Sydney, I really appreciate you, one, thinking about, you know, my, my biggest fear is, and again, I'm role playing here. My biggest fear is supporting my family, um, making sure, you know, we don't have to pull our kids out of school or, you know, I've got to go you know, work at a convenience store, not anything wrong with that. But I, I, just to say is I appreciate that part because I'll be able to, you know, that allays a lot of my fears. Then you also repeating it back to me because I, really the goal is 1530 an hour, you know, uh, it was for me to walk out and go, okay, I got a plan and I was heard. I appreciate it, Alexis, and hold me accountable for that. I, I want, I, as I said, I'm going to help you find that next role, and we're going to do, we're going to spend time exploring that. And I want you to hold me accountable. If I'm not doing anything, uh, doing anything short of what I promised, um, you know, I, 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 you know, I want you to hold me accountable to that. Thanks, Sydney. Awesome. You guys. have baseball practice tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but you both are fantastic. Luke asked a really good question here on the side. He said, "Do you have people ever find helping them get their next job?" Um, is infantilizing, likely patronizing. And, and the answer is when they're in, in anger and fear, yes, they do. And so many people say, nope, I don't want your help. I'm, I'm fine on my own. And to that, I simply say to them, I understand that you don't want it now. Just know that it's an open offer. And if you change your mind later, uh, I'm here. And what I find is, is that if I then reach out again, maybe a few days later, a week later, they often will come back and say, yeah, Matt, you know, I actually really would love your help. Once the anger has dissipated, once the fear has dissipated. So with that, let's wrap that up. We're sort of already a little bit past time. And if people have the time to do it, I'd love for you to go to the bottom and um, copy and paste the, the feedback template on the bottom of the doc and write in what feedback you have for, for us, for me, for Regina. Um, and, uh, and let us know how we can be better. And obviously we're, uh, I think we're listening. Um, all right, guys, thank you all so much. This was super fun for me. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming. And hopefully we'll see you in class two weeks from now. I believe we already decided the topic for the next class, which is areas of responsibility and mission, vision, values. So be sure to go on to Luma and uh, RSVP to the next um, and final uh, class of the year and of this series. Um, and once again, please fill out the feedback below. Um, we're always listening. We always want to improve. Um, and we'll see y'all in two weeks. Enjoy December. Bye, everyone.